Welcome back to another Monster Hunter tutorial. We're going to talk about the hammer today. The hammer is a pretty powerful weapon and it is very good for dealing blunt damage, which is used to stun monsters. So the hammer actually has two modes. It has a normal mode and then it has a power mode. And we're pretty much only going to be using the power mode for when we're running hammer. But we're, we're still going to cover the normal mode just because it is there and it is important to know all of the basic moves of a weapon so that we can enjoy using them. So let's jump right into our Y attack. So if we're moving forward, we will actually do a side bash. But if we're not moving forward, we will just replace that first with an overhead and then a second and an upswing. So again, if we're moving forward, side and then overhead smash two and upswing. So that's going to be a decent amount of damage and has good KO power. Um, but let's talk about our B attacks. So we don't have anything YB. This is me pressing YB right now. And it doesn't do anything. So let's talk about our B attack. So our B attack is actually going to be something that we're going to be using for a crazy amount of damage, at least for the hammer. So you're going to walk up to the monster and you're going to hit B. One, two, three, four, and then it's going to end in a finisher. So that finisher is actually going to be the same charge attack that we get into for the power mode, but we're going to talk about the normal mode char charge attacks now. So there's a few different things that we're going to need to know about our charge attacks. First off, there are different levels, one, two, and now three, and they are going to deplete our stamina as we hold them. There are actually a few different attacks we can do from here so we can evade out of it to stop it charging and let's talk about our charging levels first so the first level is just going to be a normal side blow and we can actually add a second attack to that by hitting y and it will be a follow-up attack and then we have our charge level two uppercut and finally our charge level three this actually has two options as well that is the first standing still you will always do that move and then there's a few different things you can do while you're moving forward. So this is going to turn into a spinning attack. And letting it do nothing, it will just end on its own. It will fly off to the side because it's heavy. But to do an even stronger attack, we can actually hit Y to finish that attack. So we'll go swing a few times. And then I input Y, and it will do an upswing. Alternatively, if you do not want to keep spinning, you can actually end the attack as soon as it starts by hitting Y. And it will look like that. So that about does it for our normal mode. Let's go ahead and talk about our powered mode. So whilst we are charging up our hammer, we're actually going to hit B. This is going to charge our hammer. It is now glowing either pink or white or whatever it is. And this is actually going to change a few things. So you'll notice that this is the same Y and B attacks. There is nothing new about those. And again, as I said before, you'll notice that the finishing attack for the Big Bang series is actually going to be the standing still charge attack for the power mode. So let's go ahead and look at our charge attack since everything else is just about the same. So again, Level 1 with a charged follow-up. Level 2 is again an uppercut. Same rules apply to the spinning attack. You can stop it early. You can finish it off. Or you can let it go. So other than damage, there's not a whole lot that's different about this. Except for when we get into our standing still charge attack. So this is going to be... A decent amount of damage it's going to be something you're going to want to be doing um, and then moving right into big bang but you'll notice we can actually use our claw attack after we do our standing still charge attack so there's our claw that will actually grapple us to the monster so let's change up the training room settings and then we'll see what that looks like so this is something that is very fun to use, it has a decent range, so you can do a bunch of attack on your way to the monster and immediately tenderize it by using your Y attack. And it actually has some pretty good range, and if you are grappling the head, it will still do a decent amount of stun power. 
So again, this is a heavy weapon, so it is going to tenderize. There is not going to be slinger ammo, which means you have to find your own. And on a note of slinger ammo, let's talk about our shotgun for the hammer. So during a charge attack, at any point, we can actually shotgun. And it is a very close range, and then we can continue with our normal charge attacks, and even throw in a claw after our slinger, too. So again, there's not a whole bunch to cover for this, but you are going to want to stay in your power mode. Again, you have to be charging and then hit B to enter your power mode. You'll know you're in it when your hammer is glowing pink or white, and then you will be doing more damage. Something to note, this is a blunt weapon. When you are attacking the head with any attacks from this weapon, it is actually going to do stun power, which means you have a chance of knocking out the monster with enough damage done. So let's talk about stun power really quick. So as you can see, this is under the ailments, and this is going to be something that is a little bit harder for some monsters, while some monsters are a little bit more susceptible to being stunned. So if you look here at the Barith, it's going to be a one star for stunning, so you're going to want to not necessarily use it for knocking out Barith. It's not saying that you cannot knock it out, but it's not as optimal as using some other weapons. On the other hand, if we look at a Totus, we actually have a three star to stun which means stun damage does a little bit more towards him. So hunting horns and hammers actually go hand in hand with their stun and exhaust powers. They are the two blunt weapons in the game. And while other weapons do have blunt attacks, they're not quite as optimal as the hammer or hunting horn. So the hammer actually does more stun power than exhaust power. And stunning is just going to do what it sounds like it's just going to knock the monster out while exhaust power is actually going to exhaust the monster meaning it's going to bring it out of enraged modes a little bit quicker and it'll actually throw it into those drooling animations where the monster is standing still and it may even need to go somewhere and find food so while hammer has higher stun power hunting horns have higher exhaust power so while hammer has higher stun power it has a little bit of exhaust power still and hunting horn is the opposite so it has more exhaust power but it still has a little bit of stun power. The only attack from the hunting horn that does not have stun power is going to be the echo waves dragon. There is echo wave impact but echo wave dragon is not going to do stun damage. Everything else every single attack for hammer and hunting horn other than that is going to do stun damage and is going to make it pretty easy to knock it out. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the skills for the hammer now. So let's go ahead and talk about focus really quick. As you can see, this is going to be the skill that increases the gauge fill rate and reduces charge times. The charge time reduction is going to be helpful for hammers. It is going to reduce it by up to 15% at level 3. And that's just going to make it easier to pull off some of those quicker charge attacks to get a little bit more damage in. So now let's go ahead and talk about the slugger skills. This is going to be one of the main skills that you're going to, want to be running for the hammer in almost all of your builds for it. This is going to just straight up increase your stun power by 20 to 40 percent. And you will notice that this skill on screen has a secret to it, which means it has two extra skill points that some set bonus is going to unlock. But slugger is definitely going to be one of the skills that you need to be running for hammers in almost all of your hammer builds, because why would you not increase your stunning power on a stunning weapon? So let's look at the Frost Fang set bonus. This is going to be a three piece and it's going to be the Slugger Secret. This is going to let your Slugger skill go from level three up to level five. That'll be a 40% up to a 60% boost for your stunning attacks. That is very helpful. And now let's look at the Diablos. This is going to be Diablos Alpha Beta for Black and Normal Diablos. And then again, it's just going to be the Slugger Secret, which unlocks Slugger level 5. This again is going to jump you from 40% up to 60% at level 5. These are about the only skills I recommend using, especially Slugger. Focus isn't as important, but Slugger is definitely one you should be working into your builds for Hammer, because it's just going to make fights a lot more fun, because the monster is going to be knocked out on the floor a whole bunch more. So it's definitely going to help. Let's look at some gameplay.